Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons, back with some Angus Young signature guitar licks for you. We'll be looking at the theory and concepts behind the lead lines covered in a previous video which you can find with the eye up there and also the pinned comment as well as the video's description. So if you've ever wondered how Angus manages to mix a major with a minor sound, Hopefully this will demystify that just a little bit. As a quick refresher, before each breakdown we'll have the rhythm and the lead parts played together, which is how we'll be analysing these solos. The tabs, PDF, PNG and guitar profiles are up on patreon.com forward slash JBF music if you want them. And if you enjoy this kind of thing or the content I'm putting out in general, then please do let me know with a like and a comment. Both really help grow the channel as well as the visibility of this specific video. It'll pop up in searches, it makes it easier for other people to find and get the type of content that they're looking for. To clear stuff up, I'm in standard tuning for all of these licks. I think ACDC sometimes played an E flat or a bit detuned. E standard, just keeping it simple here. If you haven't already, feel free to give subscribe a click and do the enable all notifications thing to appease the sadistic YouTube overlords and let them know that actually you'd like to see a wee bit more of this kind of thing in your feed. But yeah, let's just hop to it. <laughs> Okay, first up we're playing over an A chord. It might just be a power chord. But the major tonality is sort of implied by the rest of the song. So for all intents and purposes, I'm thinking of it as A major. In broad strokes we're using a Dorian or a Dorian blues scale because we hint at the blues note, and more than that with the eye up there. Here's a common fingering for Dorian. If you find this theory stuff a bit too heavy going and just want some rough how to sound like Angus tips, give the little eye up there a click and it'll take you to a chapter in my reaction kind of slash analysis video for Angus Young and his playing style where I break down some of the key concepts in his approach to playing guitar. Kicking off with some dyads, we've got the flat 7th and the 4th, probably implying a dominant 7th sus 4. I'd say dominant rather than minor because we've not really heard a minor note here yet. We then have the 4th and the 6th, so the 4th here and the 6th. The 6th is what's giving it that Dorian sound, so when I ran through that scale before, that note there, it's the ultimate Dorian note. Playing those together, followed by a bluesy bend. And if we just play an approximation of those notes without the bending over an A drone, you can hear we're building a fair amount of bluesy tension, which gets resolved when we play here, the flat 3rd and the 5th. So again, say we keep that drone in. Nice resolution there, right? That same fourth and sixth dyad. Back down to that one that has the flat third and the fifth. This time we give it a little bluesy bend. So this is kind of going from the minor third up to the major third. It's hinting at that major third being there. And then a grace note hammer from the flat seventh up to the root. If all this talk of root 6 3rd flat 3rd is confusing then check out the tutorial with the eye up there on intervals. So why isn't this like a total mess? We've got minor and major all over the place, what on earth is going on? Well the short answer is because the blues. If I hit an A major, I can kind of jam out ideas going between major and minor and sound okay because it's a sound you've probably heard before. play this to musicians from maybe what a hundred or so years ago it's gonna sound pretty far out to say the least. Adam Neely has done a great video on what key the song Hey Joe is in which I'll pop to with a card up there. The long story short is it's in E or I suppose E flat if they tune down just like how this lick is in A over an A major but because of the context this kind of bluesy rock and roll thing playing a minor scale over it just sounds cool. I tend to think of it as a, a tonal centre rather than a musical key in the more traditional sense when you're coming from a more blues type of background or influence. To go one level deeper, if you think about the Dorian scale we briefly looked at and the Mixolydian scale, they've only got one note that's different, so here's the Mixolydian. In 
fact, I'll put those two scales up there in the tab, admittedly using a weird finger for the mixolydian just like I did there, to highlight how very similar they are. What interval is a different one? Well, Dorian's got a minor third here. I suppose here, if you're going up to that note, and also here. Whereas Mixolydian has a major one. Here, here, and here, if you want to play the scale that far. So the commonality between these scales can also help ease this major minor fluidity between the tonalities. If you're getting a clearer idea of why the last lick worked, you can pretty much apply the same stuff here. But let's break down the chords first. We've got this D, a G, D slash F sharp, A, and I've put a kind of a G in passing here. But judging by these chords and the first two bars are in D major, D being the one chord, G being its four, and A being the five chord. Yeah, well, Sort of, but since we're mainly playing over the A chord here, if you're savvy with modes you might have figured out that while we're in D major, the tonal centre is A. So it's based in A mixolydian, A mixolydian being the fifth mode of D major, D Ionian. So I see and indeed hear this as a tonal centre riff rather than a strict chord progression, and that's how I'm going to break it down. So to, to clear up the chords, this G is missing its third, so I'm not playing that note there. It just cleans up the voicing. Uh, for more on how to clean up the voicings, particularly if you're using a bit of gain like this, uh, check out the little eye up there. The D slash F sharp is just a D with an F sharp below it. So if you think of this open D shape, right, all we've done is move the F sharp from the high string, this note here, down to the low E string. They're both E's, so you're just playing on the same fret, right? ACDC play this type of chord a lot. In this context, it has more edge than going root position, which would sound like... So with the inversion, it just sounds a bit cooler, doesn't it? It just sounds a bit better. So we've got these double stops that we saw before. We've got the fourth and the sixth. Again, hinting at the blues note because of the bend. Down to the same flat third and fifth dyads. So again, while the sort of chordal riff underneath suggests a mixolydian, i.e. a major sound, we can get away with playing the Dorian licks over it, or indeed the minor pentatonic, because minor pentatonic is kind of Dorian with less notes in it. While this trick works for playing minor lead lines over a major chord, a dominant seventh, or an implied dominant seventh chord, it doesn't sound so good the other way around, playing major scales over a minor chord. It might just be that our ears aren't used to it, but I just want to make sure I mention that it's definitely more of a one-way street. But anyway, after those dyads, we've got the root, the fourth, the flat third being bent to that ambiguous kind of bluesy note. It's not really major, it's not really minor, somewhere in between. Which you know what is a great micro example of this major minor tonality. Flat third being bent up a quarter tone. It's no longer minor, but it's also not quite yet major. But it still just sounds good. Much like this lick, it isn't really major or minor, but it still sounds good. Leading into a great Dorian line, we've got the flat 6, we bend up a semitone to the flat 7th, down to the 5th, then we're bending the flat 3rd to that bluesy microtone note, just a tiny quarter tone higher, pulling off to the root. We have the root an octave higher that we're sliding into, hammering on the 2nd, and this is where we bend it all the way up to the major thirds. We're going from here to here. And here Angus is really laying into the major tonality, right? Going with this, and then we're hitting the root and the fifth. So what we're doing because of the bend is we're essentially playing this part of an A major bar chord. So if you think of your A major bar, just these top three notes, because of that bend, targeting this note, that's what we're playing. And what we do then is resolve down to the root. Okay, so the cards are a G, a 
it, it's implied as major here because of the rest of the song, but I'm just playing a power chord. We've got these two notes, the open A and the B, just acting as a lead-in to the C5. Again, it's an implied C major. It, this might actually be a C add 9. But in all honesty, I couldn't hear the rhythm track well enough to know for sure. It's, it's quite low in the mix compared to the solo. And then we have this weird looking chord here. But this is just another slash chord. This time it's a G slash B. So we've got the third and the bass. Just like that D slash F sharp, the, the same idea. So if you imagine your G major chord like this, the open one. Instead of having the G down here, you could just play the B as the lowest note, right? But because we're doing a, a power chord version of it. We think of the third here, we're just playing it like that. In fact, it's even being used in the same way in a 4, 1, 5 chord progression. Only this time a fourth higher. C, G, D. Whereas before, in the, the previous example, we had a G, D, A. So same relationship between the chords, but in a different key. But back to the underlying chords, we're wrapping up on that D, then repeating the same idea but this time resolving to the G instead of the D. Alright, so things start off normally enough, and while I think Angus is using the backing in a similar way to the last example being a, a modal tonal centre backing rather than following the chords in a more traditional bluesy way, by doing this he creates some pretty cool tension which we'll get into. Fourth to fifth bend, with some of that amazing white vibrato he does so well. The riff then goes to C, but like I say, I don't think Angus is too bothered about outlining the chords at this point. Sticking to a G blue shape, we have the root, the fifth, the flat seventh, the flat fifth, which is kind of pre-bent, released down to the fourth, flat third, again getting that minor third in there, root. Now, this root is played in the same beat as the rhythm hits a D chord, and this kind of sus four for a bit of tension which because Angus hits this brilliant double stop of D and G on the next beat gives us an implied G chord, so we've got this brilliant resolution from a D sus4 to a G just through his fantastic lead playing. Now this is an implied G chord because we've got a G, the root, and it's fifth. So if you just imagine this power chord, that's it. So he's given us some really nice tension release using that sus5 to 1 chord. Angus goes down the minor pentatonic, root, flat 7th, 5th, 4th. And these notes work really well for backing. Even the leading notes produce a bit of a nice harmony, so if I try and play those together, you've got the lead doing this, or the rhythm's in the open A, so you have this. I'm going to have to re-finger this so I can play both these notes. So I move this 2nd fret, this in the rhythm, to here, and Angus is playing that note this time, so you have those. And then here is pretty straightforward, he's playing the 3rd fret, the rhythm is playing that C, so that you have. So you can see playing them together, there's a really nice harmony on this occasion. And when he's landed on that 4th, from the G minor pentatonic, which is a C, that's exactly the chord that's being played in the rhythm. Down to this flat third, and hitting a root, as the rhythm part once again plays that G slash B chord, so we're playing the root essentially. Then it's this uh, flat third, again that bluesy bend, root, landing on this fifth over another G chord, we have a root, and flat third again with a tiny little bluesy bend and a pinch harmonic to wrap up this part of the solo. Alright, if you made it this far, well done to you and a shout out to the Lick Squad Elite. You guys rock. A nice reprieve from what has been admittedly a bit of an intensive breakdown, but hopefully highlighting why I can't keep up doing these licks and theory videos in the one thing and put them out at a regular pace. It's, it's just, just too much of a workload. But anyway, all we've really got here is playing in the key of A. Well, they're all major chords. Angus is doing some minor bluesy infused licks. So in a nutshell, if you've ever wondered how Angus Young can mix major and minor licks, this is it. Play over the major chords in a bluesy rock context using the minor pentatonic scale, blues scale, Dorian or Dorian blues, and lean into the major by hitting the major third, suggesting a major pentatonic or mixolydian when you want to get a slightly more country, upbeat or major twang. You can treat the riff as a sort of tonal centre like we've been doing so far, not necessarily following the chords. It does end this one a little bit, but that's maybe a topic for another video. And make sure to resolve to the root 
to round up your phrases. So running through this one quickly, we've got the flat seventh bent to the root. And again. Root. Root again. Flat seventh to fifth. Then we have the fourth being bent to the flat five. Fifth. Again, that fourth to flat five. Back to the fourth, pulling off to the flat third, and then root, root. And again, some vibrato. Click there for more ACDC goodness. This has been Signature Guitar Licks, that's the playlist there. But yeah, hit subscribe to keep up to date with the channel, leave me a comment, check out the tabs on my Patreon, and enable all notifications by ringing that little bell on the side if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys.